So what was your reaction watching all of this? Well, it seems fitting that Ron DeSantis goes on Twitter to announce that he's going to decapitate the FBI and anyone that colluded with big tech when FBI and Twitter were the two biggest collaborators in conspiring to rig a presidential election and censor free speech. So I found it ironic that he chose that that pre-Elon. And uh, that was pre-Elon, but I found it ironic that he chose that platform. And I found it ironic that it didn't really work out the way he'd wanted to on the on the launch thing. But uh, I'm glad he's in the fight, because for me as a Trump advisor, it shows me all the former, quote unquote, Trump advisors that are over there that uh, have shifted sides. And that's the right to do so. But now the lines are drawn and we don't have to guess about it anymore. Mm. Trump responded with a few different um, videos, one which kind of captured the moment. It's only four seconds long for the listening audience. It shows a a rocket (laughs) failing to launch and exploding. We'll show it for the YouTube audience. Watch. It says, Ron, and down goes the rocket. It's just video and then explodes. Um, You know, pretty apt. It was not a great launch. What was the reaction as far as you know, inside Trump world? Well, I think you saw it with President Trump's multiple truths and videos that he put out there. He summarized it as best as he could in that four second span. It was a failure to launch. And when you go out there and analyze what Ron DeSantis said, I didn't find anything of substantive value that he would do differently than Donald Trump did when he was president and what he's outlined in his Agenda 47. I'm sure there's some minor issues I didn't pick up on. But to me, as a senior advisor to President Trump, I'm looking to see what is the monumental difference? Why would people want to go with Ron DeSantis if President Trump has ran and done it successfully as president before? I just didn't see anything big in, in, in terms of policy. He made the point that he is going to build the wall that Trump did not wind up building. I mean, that's one thing. He seems to be getting to the right of Trump on this gender nonsense that we're seeing out there, saying a man cannot Mm -hmm. become a woman, period. I haven't heard Trump go that far, though I haven't heard him asked about this issue lately, and things have changed since when he ran. Uh, Do you see differences on those two points between the two men? Well, I think, you know, President Trump did start to build the wall. You're right. We didn't get to he didn't get to finish it. So I'm not sure that Ron saying he's going to Governor Sanders is saying he's going to actually build or complete it is a monumental difference in policy. President Trump has said since he launched his campaign, he's going to complete finish building that wall in year one. And on the gender uh, sort of um, comments, you know, he's had individuals like Riley Gaines. And I've been there at events where President Trump has spoken and she's highlighted you know, the position that basically he's taken that men do not belong in women's sports, period. And I think if someone in the media were to ask him with more fidelity, you would get an answer that um, uh, provides a little sharper contrast uh, to what Governor DeSantis is saying. But I don't think there's any great distinction there. What do you make, Cash, of the argument that he's Trump without the baggage, that will get Trump, Trump policies without the tweets and controversy? I think that's political rhetoric they want out there. People have, you know, I got to remind people sometimes that President Trump was president and Ron DeSantis has not been president. And it's a unique period in history for America, because I think the last time that happened was Grover Cleveland in like the 1800s. And so President Trump can run and say, I did this. And you see that I did this in national security, in economy, the border, healthcare, what have you. And Governor DeSantis can say that about what he's done successfully in the state of Florida and the Numbers just don't lie at the end of the day. President Trump received 5 million votes in the state of Florida in 2020, and Governor DeSantis received 4 million votes in the state of Florida when he ran for early election in 2022. The um, the message from DeSantis wasn't directly anti-Trump. He's smart mm-hmm. enough, you know, I think, to be careful around that issue, though, you know, there's an argument that he should just punch him in the face because it's on, right? <laughs> it's like Trump's going to punch him in the face and has been. So, you know, we, whatever, politicos will decide that. Um, but he made a couple of comments like entertainment is not governing or, go, you know, governing is mm-hmm. not about entertainment, something to that effect. And that we have to get past what the Republican Party has been suffering from these past few cycles, which is a culture of losing, a culture of losing, which, you know, clearly is a reference to Trump. Mm-hmm. Um, so what do you make of those two points? 
Well, I think on the the culture of losing, yeah, it's tough to uh, not succeed in a presidential election. But I think also there have been valid arguments made, um, especially with the highlighting of the Durham report and what Governor DeSantis said about himself about censorship and big tech and the FBI and other government agencies. So when it comes down to whether it's a failure of the RNCs, and I'm a big critic of them at at, at often points, um, the Republican National Committee and the party, I don't know that you can just put that all squarely on President Trump given the history of what's just come out recently in the Durham report. And I, but it's the separation that I guess Governor DeSantis is looking for to see that while you can't go out there and be Hollywood and entertaining, the unfortunate reality, Megan, is we live in a 24-7 news cycle where if news isn't breaking every hour on the hour, then something's going wrong in the media. And that is, you know, the definition of having entertainment enter into the political stream. So I just don't see how you do it elsewise. And I don't see anyone who's better in the media than President Trump. Um, I pointed out before some of the headlines, Daily Mail, disaster, Fox News called it a disaster, Breitbart News <laughs> calls it a debacle, um, and you could go on. I mean, once you get to the left-wing media, it gets even uglier than that. Do you think, what do you think it says, if anything, about DeSantis and his candidacy? I mean, is it more than just a false start? Well, I think that's a great point. He could have chosen to do this in a live setting at a big audience or at multiple different styles, uh, go on a bus tour, what have you. But this is the launch that he engineered with Elon Musk to do it in a specific way at Twitter, because to me, I take it as that's the style campaign he wants to run. He wants to be on social media, uh, which is ironic when he talks about he wants to be to be less entertaining. And it, to me, President Trump's style has always been, I'm going to be more in person. And that's a striking difference. And the tone has now been set. And we'll see how they recuperate or recover from this sort of failure to launch or however you want to style it. But I think it's a great point that you're making that the stylistic differences right off the bat are – I'm going to launch on Twitter and go uh, 100 miles an hour, and President Trump is going to continue to do in-person events and show up in places like East Palestine and do rallies, and um, you're going to see him crisscross the country. I'm sure Pres- Ron DeSantis is going to start doing that, but he didn't do it from the inception. Some people take CBD for better sleep or less stress and more calm in their lives. Some take it for pain relief, better energy, or better focus and concentration. Today, I want to tell you about CB Distillery. CB Distillery, and there are over 2 million satisfied customers. According to a poll of their customers, 90% reported they sleep better with CBD. 81% said CBD helps with stress, and 80% said CBD helps with aches and pains after physical activity. If you struggle to get a good night's sleep, and if you're dealing with too much stress uh, and could just use a little calm in your life, If you suffer with pain and discomfort, especially after physical exercise, you could give CBD a try from cbdistillery.com. Use my 20% discount by visiting cbdistillery.com and enter my initials MK for your discount. No prescription is required. That's cbdistillery.com, promo code MK for 20% off, cbdistillery.com. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.